Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through today's experiment. In today's experiment entitled Solutions and Electrolytes, so experiment seven in your book, we'll be examining some of the properties of electrolytes, as well as discussing what electrolytes are, as well as talking about solutions and molarities. Part one of this lab involves electrolytes. Electrolytes are charged particles dissolved in water. They come in two varieties, strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. Strong electrolytes, when dissolved in water, dissociate completely, giving you cations and anions. Weak electrolytes, on the other hand, dissolve in water, but give you only a few ions, uh, a few cations and a few anions, and mostly the parent molecule remains. Now, a great example of a weak electrolyte is acetic acid. It's that acid in uh, white vinegar that makes it taste so good. Acetic acid is a weak electrolyte. It dissolves in water, but it dissociates only slightly, giving you cations and anions. It's mostly the parent molecule. On the other hand, a strong electrolyte will dissociate 100% in water, giving you only cations and anions, not leaving you with any of the parent molecule whatsoever. Now, the ramifications of this in water are very interesting. A strong electrolytic solution can conduct electricity extremely efficiently. A weak electrolytic solution, on the other hand, can only conduct electricity very slightly. But, but it still does it. It still conducts electricity, just not very well. Now, before you start thinking that all solutions are electrolytes, they're not. For example, sugar. Sugar dissolves in water, but it doesn't dissociate into ions. So that's a non-electrolyte. Not everything's an electrolyte. There's a lot of non-electrolytes out there. Now, part two of this lab will involve making a solution. To do that, we're going to use absorbic acid, the disodium salt, because it dissolves better in water, and we're going to use what's called a volumetric flask. Once we've done that, we're going to test it inside of our spectrometer to measure the absorbance of your sample versus a standard sample, to check to see how close you get in concentration to a standard. And we're also going to calculate molarities and percent solutions in today's lab. Please come to lab with your goggles and also come properly dressed. Hi, my name is Dionia Antigua and I'm a laboratory technician at Briar College North Campus. Today we'll be discussing electrolytes. An electrolyte is a substance that when dissolved in water will, f will ionize, allowing electricity to pass through water completing a circuit. In today's lab, we'll, you'll be testing various electrolytes, weak and strong. A strong electrolyte is an electrolyte that will conduct electricity very strongly. A weak electrolyte will also conduct electricity, but not as strongly. And a non-electrolyte, when dissolved in water, will not conduct electricity. Here, we have a conductivity apparatus, and as you can see, the light bulb is currently turned off because the circuit is broken. In order to complete the circuit, the electrodes must be submerged in a solution containing an electrolyte. Here, we have a saline solution, also known as 0.9% sodium chloride, and we will raise the solution to submerge the electrodes to see if there's an electrolyte present. As you can see, the light bulb turns on, so there must be an electrolyte present in the saline solution. Part two of today's experiment, we're required to use a volumetric flask. A volumetric flask is a great way of measuring a very precise amount of liquid. You'll need a water bottle, and you'll need the material to dissolve. In today's lab, we'll be using disodium salt of, absor of absorbic acid. Take the cover off your volumetric flask. Transfer the solid material into the flask. Take the water bottle, rinse down the material into the volumetric flask. And then we add a little bit of water, you know, about a third of the way full. Put the cover on, and then just swirl it like so. 
try to dissolve the material that's down there. Get it all nice and dissolved. Once you're satisfied that all your solid material has dissolved, then add more water and bring the meniscus up to the blue line that's drawn on the volumetric flask. The blue line is located right here. I'm not sure you can see it on the camera, but it's very evident when you have the volumetric flask in your hand. Add water so that the bottom of the meniscus touches the blue line. That is 50.00 milliliters. Now, once you've got the meniscus on that line, which I do now, put the cover on, and now the way you shake the volumetric flask is very important. Make sure the cover's on tight, invert it, shake it a few times, put it back upright, invert again, shake a few times, put it back upright, invert it, shake it a few times, put it back upright, repeat this process 10 times. We're trying to make sure we have a nice homogeneous solution. If the solution is not homogeneous, the next step in the procedure will be erroneous. So make sure you shake it like this, invert, put it back upright, invert, shake, back upright at least 10 times. Once you've made your solution for part two, bring it to the spectrophotometer. This machine measures absorption of light through a sample. You'll be testing your sample against a sample that I made. My sample is called the standard sample and yours is called the test solution. The test solution should have the same absorbance as the standard solution if it has the same concentration. You'll want to get some help from your instructor to use this instrument. All you have to do is take your sample, a cuvette, this is a cuvette, small little square device, put the sample inside of the cuvette, fill it to about a centimeter from the top, and that's all you need. Put it inside the machine and get a reading. Again, you'll probably want to get your instructor's help doing this step.